guys and welcome to our next installment. Thank you for joining me. My name is Megan McNamara and I'm here to give you your guide to medical aid. All right. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like and share this information. Um, I am here to teach consumer education um, on financial planning principles. Um, from my perspective as an administrator, having 11 years experience in the industry. And I feel that there are a few things that I can share that can help in uh, making some decisions. And um, also to just encourage you to just also get involved in your you know, financial planning needs as well. And not just leave it to the financial planner. If you know one or two things, then you know what type of questions to ask. And you also know what to expect when dealing with the financial planner. I hope that these videos are um, helping you and I hope they're educational and I hope you're benefiting from them. And yes, let's get into it. So today I just want to do a short video. I know I'm long winded and I cannot stop talking, but today I just wanted you to consider um, why you would need medical aid and what are the things you need to look at when you um, want to take out a medical aid. So it just depends if you are going to, um, if you're joining a new company or if you want to take out medical aid in your personal capacity. There are two ways in which you can take out medical aid, in your personal capacity or under an employer group. So let's say you are employed and you joined a company and this company has medical aid offered. And they tell you that, okay, this is the plan that we recommend and um, this is how we contribute towards the medical aid. Some companies pay half, so you would pay half the medical aid premium and the company would pay half of the other half. And that half that they pay would then make up your cost to company. So it would be a fringe benefit on your um, pay slip and in your contract, um, you will see on your pay slip it would be deducted um, with the tax. So you'd get your gross income, um, which would be probably 20,000. And then from there on, tax is deducted, UIF is deducted, um, and your medical aid contribution and a pension fund contribution will be deducted. Then your net is what comes to your bank account, all right? So you don't pay your medical aid with your net income, you pay it with your gross income. That's before tax money. And some, some companies say, okay, we will give you, let's say 25,000 Rand, but you need to sort out your own medical aid. So you can decide what plan you want to go on. Um, and that is almost equivalent as to being, you know, on a medical aid in your private capacity, because you have the flexibility to choose your plan, your medical aid, and then you pay for it via debit order from your bank account the funds will be deducted by the medical aid. If the employer pays you, some, some employers, some people are fortunate enough to work for companies that pay 100% of their medical aid. So that also becomes a fringe benefit and that will be included in that person's total cost to company. And um, then the this will not be deducted from the salary and it will not be deducted from... Um, from the bank account. So the company will pay the medical aid directly on behalf of the member. All right. So then another question is what happens if you leave your employer group? Let's say you take out medical aid and you leave your employer. There are options. A lot of medical aids, actually all medical aids have the option to then convert it to personal capacity. All you need to do is just submit um, a change of banking details form. First of all, in the background, they will remove you from the employer billing group and then they, you, they will then load your banking details for the debit order and then they will deduct the um, contributions from your bank account. And then you continue with your medical aid because um, the one thing you don't want is break in cover. So yeah, so let's say then you take out medical aid and then it's either you are on personal capacity where you pay for it yourself or you're part of an employer group, all right? Your employer either pays 50, you pay 50%, they pay 50% or they pay 100%. 
or you pay 100%, but they give you that money to pay for the medical aid, right? So those are the different ways that the employer can get involved. Say, um, let's just take, you know, an example. Let's say, okay, you want to take out medical aid in your personal capacity. So what are the things you need to consider? Um, because on the employer group, they might say, okay, we recommend this plan. On your own, you need to decide, okay, what do I want from a medical aid? Are you a youngster? Are you still, you know, healthy? Um, do you have children? Do you have any pre-existing conditions? Um, you know, are you an active person? Do you have an active lifestyle? Uh, you know, things that need, that you would like to get done in the year, like maybe get spectacles, you know, every two years. Do you um, want to get preventative um, screenings done? There are a lot of things that you can, you know, consider, all right? But then the bottom line is you need to consider your budget. How much are you willing to spend on medical aid? And then you need to decide whether can you be able to afford to pay out of your own pocket for medication or would you want the medical aid to cover that as well? And then if you have children, are you able to cover the day-to-day -day doctor's visits and medication over the counter yourself in cash or do you need the medical aid to cover that? Do you need the security of medical aid to cover that? Because with more security on medical aid, well, I mean security, the more you pay. And why I say security is because um, you might be secure for the first three months and then you run out of savings, um, you know, cash out of your own pocket. So it also depends on how you manage the medical aid and how <clears throat> often you claim from the medical aid then you need to consider all these things so you need to consider do you have chronic do you need chronic medication do you need um, screenings um, would you like your teeth your um, teeth your dentistry your optical um, do you travel you know does this medical aid cover international travel there's a lot of things you need to consider when choosing a plan then there are I would say four core or different type of plans that every medical aid has. So then you would have number one, your income bracket one, which is for the low income um, <clears throat> employees, your blue collar employees, which earn between a certain amount and then you pay a specific premium. Remember, there are certain exclusions for that and you would need to prove that you earn that amount but it would secure obviously your hospital visits. So that is your low income, <clears throat> that is your low income um, option. Then your second cheapest option would be a pure hospital plan. So a pure hospital plan just covers hospital visits. So for whatever, um, whether if it's elective um, procedures, procedures that you plan for, or if it's an emergency, then those are covered <clears throat> on a hospital plan. This does not cover um, uh, doctor's visits. It does not cover day-to-day -day benefits. It does not cover over-the-counter medication. It does not cover prescription medication. It does not cover chronic medication. That is your hospital plan. You get a plan that is um, coastal or delta. So your coastal or delta Delta basically means that you are you can go to specific um, hospitals within the Delta network. All right, so you cannot go to every single hospital or in South Africa or in the world. You are restricted to certain hospitals, and in your area or in your province where you live, you can have one or two hospitals that you can uh, then go to. Or if you visit a different province, you would need to make sure that you know where these Delta networks are, what these Delta network hospitals are. And then you can go to those hospitals for any elective procedures. However, if you are in an emergency and um, the ambulance picks you up, they can take you to any hospital in the world, in, in South Africa because it's an emergency. All right. Once they've stabilized you, then they'll move you to your Delta hospital. Because remember, you're paying a cheaper premium to <clears throat> only have access to those specific hospitals. So you do not have access 
to all the hospitals in South Africa. Then you've got to get a coastal plan. A coastal plan also covers you um, if you're living within or around the coastal areas. So from your, your, your KwaZulu Natal, Northern KwaZulu Natal, Southern KwaZulu Natal, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, all the way um, you know, around the Cape. If you are living in the coastal um, bands, then coastal regions, then you have hospitals that are dedicated to you and your premium is much cheaper. So you'll need to consider if you are living in the coastal regions of South Africa and you are on a normal medical aid and not a coastal medical aid, you've got to consider the costs. Look at the premium um, comparison between a coastal plan and a normal plan that covers, um, you know, around South Africa. And if you're comfortable um, moving to a plan that just covers you, you know, on the coast, <clears throat> on the medical aid plans on the coast, if you're comfortable with that, then consider that type of cover. It will save you money. All right. This is now if you are paying out of pocket for your own premium. Okay. Then you get your medical aid that covers um, you at any hospital in South Africa. So it doesn't matter um, whether it's elective procedures or an emergency, you are covered either way. And obviously, that is the, uh, the more expensive option. So you would need to, whatever plan, whatever medical aid you are considering, you would need to sit down and look at the different options. And look at um, whether you are where are you based are you inland are you in the coast um, do you mind you know just using coastal um, you know <clears throat> coastal hospitals or um, do you want a Delta option if you're inland do you only want to use Delta hospitals so you can pay a cheaper premium um, do you have a favorite hospital within that Delta network? If there's one or two that you like, then you can always move to that option. It will save you money. So there are always ways of saving when it comes to medical aid. You just need to do your research on the different plans. And all these um, medical aid websites have extensive information. They've got brochures um, upon brochures. They've got um, comparisons of their plans and how they're covered. And you actually need to sit down and do the research yourself. You need to put in the work to find out which plan will be more affordable to you and which will suit your budget. All right. Um, it's rather have medical aid than not because then you know that in an event of an emergency, you are covered. Also, it is law that even if you don't have a medical aid, you are you can be taken to a private hospital but the only thing they can do is stabilize you and make sure that you are stable enough to be moved to a, a public hospital that is the only time that you will see the inside of a private hospital without medical aid and that's only if it is in an emergency other than that if you do go into a private hospital with no medical aid they are going to need your credit card details or you would need to put down X amount that the hospital says. In some cases, it would be 50,000 Rand, 20,000 Rand that you'll need to put down upfront before they can actually admit you to the hospital. This is not excluding the cost of actually having you in there. So that's just to secure your bed in the private hospital. Private healthcare is extremely expensive. And um, if you have an option to have medical aid, rather have it, rather even be on a hospital plan that you know that in any case, if you're a young um, female and you are in a relationship, what happens if you fall pregnant and you have you know, a child? Um, would you wanna to go to a public hospital or would you want the comfort of knowing that you can go to a private hospital if you need to? <clears throat> if you need to. And um, there are so many other benefits that come with having a medical aid. Yes, it is expensive, um, but in our country, unfortunately, our health, our national health care is not up to the standard where it should be, um, although they are trying their best, but also having this medical aid also helps. And it just gives you that comfort to know that if anything happens, I'm covered, especially if you have young children, um, anything can happen to kids. And um, it's always best to know that you're secure and you have the medical aid. But 
do your research. There are plans. Medical aids do their best to um, make sure that they have a variety of plans. I mean, Discovery on its own has over probably 20 plans where you can choose um, a plan that is suitable for you, suitable for your budget, and that will give you extensive cover that you need, depending on your lifestyle. Also, if you're going to take out medical aid, let's say with Discovery or with any other um, uh, you know, medical aid, they have rewards programs linked to these, like with Discovery, they have Vitality, where you can benefit um, by going to the gym, um, paying, you know, Virgin Active, a minuscule amount um, back. It's linked to your medical aid. The vitality is linked to your medical aid. Obviously, you'd pay for the vitality. And I don't even know how much a normal vit um, version active, um, what you call this, premium is every month. But, you know, when I was still going to virgin active, I was literally paying 170 rand a month because I had vitality and it was linked to my discovery life cover, though. Um, but there are benefits to having, you know, medical aid and a rewards program linked together. All right. So it's certain things that you need to really research. And there's so much information out there that can help you make a, an informed decision. So I'm going to leave the video here. And then in our next video, we're going to discuss our waiting periods, exclusions, underwriting. We'll discuss um, the application stage. We'll discuss um, the claim stage. And yes, I hope you will join me for our next video. Turn on that notification bell, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.